There can be few killers in the history of American crime more depraved than Harry Powers. On the face of it, Powers, real name Herman Drenth, was a respectable married man, opening a grocery store with his wife in Clarksburg, West Virginia. Scratched below the surface though, and an entirely different picture emerged. One of a deadly Lothario, who preyed on the lonely women he attracted through matrimonial bureaus like Detroit's American Friendship Society. Power's method was simple. He'd run an ad describing himself as a wealthy widower worth $150,000. He claimed to own a beautiful 10-room brick home, completely furnished with everything that would make a good woman happy. My wife would have her own car and plenty of spending money, he continued. She would have nothing to do but enjoy herself. A level-headed assessment might suggest that these claims were simply too good to be true, and yet there were plenty of takers, including the woman whose death would eventually lead to Power's downfall. Asta Eicher was a 50-year-old Chicago widow with three children, Greta 14, Harry 12, and Annabelle 9. In July 1931, she told friends that she'd fallen in love with a Mr. Pearson, who she'd met through a matrimonial agency. At the same time, she asked her lodger, William O'Boyle, to vacate the premises as Pearson was moving in. In August, O'Boyle returned to the Aisha home to collect some tools he'd left behind. He found Mrs. Aisha and her children gone, but Pearson was there and he was in the process of emptying the house. O'Boyle immediately informed the police. Under questioning, Pearson said that the Eiches had moved to Colorado and had asked him to settle their affairs. He even produced a letter to this effect, but as he could not provide details on the family's whereabouts, the police were suspicious. At the Eicher house, they found love letters that had passed between Pearson and Mrs. Eicher. Those led them to Quiet Dell, West Virginia, where Pearson lived under the the name Harry Powers with his wife, Luella. Powers, Pearson, continued to insist that the Eiches had gone to Colorado, but he told conflicting stories and when the police searched his house, they found jewellery and other items belonging to Mrs Eicher. It was enough to obtain a search warrant for the property and on August 28th, they unearthed the corpses of the widow and her three children. The following day, another body, later identified as Dorothy Lemke, 50, of Northborough, Massachusetts, was uncovered. She'd been missing since July. After a brutal interrogation by police, Powers confessed to the five murders, providing details that sickened even seasoned detectives. He said that he'd driven the Eiches from Chicago to his farm. There, he'd held them prisoner for a few days before leading them one by one to the garage where he'd hung them from the rafters. He forced 12-year-old Harry to watch the murders of his mother and sisters. When the boys started screaming, Powers bludgeoned him to death with a claw hammer. No more bodies were found at the farm, but there was a strong suspicion that Powers had killed other victims, particularly as the police discovered a trunkload of letters from more than 100 love-starved women from all over the country. Asked how many he had killed, Powers simply shrugged his shoulders and muttered, I don't know. Asked why he'd done it, he readily admitted deriving sexual pleasure from watching his victims' death throes. It beat any cat house I was ever in, he said. Powers went to the gallows on March 18th, 1932, taking with him to the grave the truth about how many women he'd murdered for profit and pleasure. <laughs>